This video will show you the proper technique for insertion of a nasogastric tube. Prior to beginning the procedure, please be sure to complete the following steps. I have assembled my equipment. And I begin by placing a towel over the patient's chest. I'm going to start by preparing the tape that I will need to secure the device and also to mark the location that I've measured for the NG tube. I need a small piece for uh, identifying the measurement. And I'm going to put it on the end of my irrigation tray. The point is, you don't want to put it on a surface that is con potentially contaminated with microorganisms. If you wish, you could take a disinfecting wipe and clean off the edge of the table if you want to use there. I'm using a fresh supply that is not contaminated and I know that I will not contaminate the tape. I'm also going to prepare a piece of tape that is approximately four inches long and I will use this to secure to the patient's nose. I'm going to take this and split this down the middle. Leaving it about an inch or two that is not split at the end. And I'm also going to also rest that on my irrigation tray so that I have it available for me. The next piece that I'm going to do is to open the NG kit. You'll notice that I have on regular clean gloves. This is not a sterile procedure. One of the first things I want to do with the NG tube is to inspect it to make sure that there are no issues with it. I'm also going to remove this clear adapter, which I may need in the future, so I want to keep it handy if I'm going to be suctioning in the future. I'm going to take the white end of this NG plug and I'm going to put that into the end of the NG tube. It's important for you to notice that the white will always be used for the NG tube and the blue side will always be used for the blue pigtail. The next thing I'm going to do is measure the NG tube for the appropriate length that I will be inserting. To do that I'm going to measure from the tip of the nose to the ear and then from the ear down to the xiphoid process once I have identified that location I'm going to mark, mark it with the marker or a piece of tape just distal to that location like so then I'll know where to stop when I'm inserting the NG tube once I have done that, I'm going to lubricate the NG tube. So to do that, I will take my water-soluble lubricant, and I can open that package and squirt that directly onto my NG package here. I will then be able to take the first one to two inches of the NG tube and roll that into and, and um, liberally lo uh, excuse me, lubricate the first two inches of the NG tube. Once I have that done, I'm going to hand the patient their emesis basin, a small cup of water with a straw, keep tissues handy in case they need them, and then I'm going to ask my patient to tip their head back against the bed. I'm going to begin inserting the NG tube into the pre-selected nostril, being very cautious not to force the NG tube past any resistance. I can also ro rotate the catheter like so, and sometimes that will help pass any mild obstruction that I might need, but definitely no forcing. Once I get the NG tube to the back of the throat, I'm probably going to know this because I will el elicit a gag reflex. The patient will begin coughing and gagging. At this point, I want them to tip their head forward, so tuck their chin to their chest and they're going to begin taking sips of the water. With their chin tucked, and with every sip of water, I'm going to advance the catheter a little bit further. Sip, advance, sip, advance, sip, and 
advance, advance until I get it to my pre-selected length. Once I have done this and the patient is not coughing, not gagging, not showing any signs of respiratory distress, I can secure the tube. If they're showing any of those symptoms, I want to remove the catheter immediately and um, give the patient a chance to recover from those symptoms. It probably is indicating that you have the tube in the wrong location. So I'm going to hold the NG tube at the nostril so that it does not dislodge either further into the stomach or out. And I'm going to take my skin prep and open that up and I'm going to wipe that across the areas where I'm going to be using the tape on the nose and on the cheek. Allow that to dry. I can then take my tape that I have split and I'm going to put the portion that is not split directly onto the bridge of the nose like so. I have the two pigtails kind of hanging down along the NG tube. Then I'm going to take one of the pigtails and I'm going to wrap it around the NG tube. I will take the other piece and I'm going to wrap that around the opposite direction until it's secure. I can take another piece of tape and I can actually Put that across to the bridge of the nose just as kind of a second securing method so that it does not get dislodged. Once I have secured it to the nose, I can then begin checking and verifying placement. One of the first things that I will do is to make sure that it is not coiled up in the back of the throat. I will do this by taking a tongue blade and a pen light and I will check the back of the throat thoroughly to make sure that the NG tube is traveling down towards the esophagus and not coiled up. The next thing that I can do is, of course we know that evidence base tells us that we want to use x-ray to verify placement. Um, that's kind of your number one best practice for verifying placement. Another option that we can do is to aspirate gastric contents. And to do that, I'm going to take my irrigation tray, open that up. This kit comes with a graduate and a 60 milliliter catheter tipped syringe. I do not need to fill this with water or anything like that. I'm going to fold the NG tube on itself, kind of pinching it off to clamp it, remove the white plug, and then I can insert my syringe. Once I have that securely in there, I can let go of this. The purpose of doing that is so that when I take the plug out, I do not have um, significant amounts of gastric content spilling out onto the patient or potentially myself. Now I'm going to take the syringe plunger and I'm going to pull back on it. This is when I'm going to be looking at the NG tube near the insertion site to see if there's any gastric content coming back into the tube. Once I have visualized gastric content, I know that I'm in the correct place and I can push that content back in. That is checking verification of the correct placement. To remove the syringe, again, I need to clamp the, the NG tube on itself, take the syringe out, and replug it with the white side of the plug. I need to also secure this NG tube to the patient's gown. To do this, I will take another piece of tape. And I am going to have the patient turn from side to side, making sure that I give them enough slack that it will not pull on the NG tube if they turn their head. I'm going to wrap a piece of tape around the NG tube and back onto itself. Then I'm going to take a safety pin and I am going to put the safety pin right through that piece of tape and secure it 
into the gown. It's important for a Salem sump to always have the blue vent above the level of the stomach. So I would want to secure this somewhere behind the patient, potentially their shoulder or behind the pillow. But this blue pigtail acts as an air vent and needs to remain above the level of stomach. At this point, I can either leave it clamped based on physician's orders or I can hook it up to suction if need be. This completes the steps for insertion of an NG tube. Following the procedure, please be sure to complete the following steps.